Thanks so much for joining Rudy and me. We're in Revelation and we're in chapter 21. And we're going to now get a vision of the new Jerusalem. And so there's the evil city that we've studied, the city that was represented uh, as Rome then and is basically the world system that is opposed to God. Now we're going to have a system that is made by God that we get to live in. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. So verse 9 says, One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls of, of the seven last plagues came and said to me, uh, Come, I'll show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Uh, somebody said, I don't know where I read it, years ago, somebody said, You want to be held in the hand of the angel that holds the bowl rather than underneath the pouring out of the bowl. So keep in mind, these, these, what we're going to read about is for those who put their hand in God's hand to be held in the hand of God and his spirit as opposed to those who fall under his judgment. So let me show you the bride of the lamb. Verse 10, the spirit he carried me to a great high mountain, showed me the holy city, uh, Jerusalem coming down from heaven, had the glory of God, a radiance like a rare jewel. Uh, had a high, I'm going to skip some for, phrases here, a high wall, 12 gates, Lots of jewels. Give us those images, Rudy. You have gates. You have New Jerusalem. Uh, you have the jewels. So put connect those with Jewish history for us. Well, I'll start with the the jewels because it basically it's said that it is the foundation of the New Jerusalem. Right. And so basically, when I hear foundation, I think about Jesus being the rock. Right. And on this rock are these 12 jewels, which are very much the same jewels that the high priest wore right. uh, on his chest. So there, but they're, but they are actually said to be representing the apostles because really the foundation of the city is on the shoulders of the apostles because of Jesus' teaching to them. Right. And then, the, then we're told as we look up from the foundation to the city itself we see that it has gates and the gates there's three gates on each in each one of the four directions north south east and west and and over these gates these 12 gates are the children of israel's name just like they were above the stones in the breastplate of the high priest mm -hmm. but in order to get into the city that has a foundation on the apostles of which they are the the word of God in the earth that he used these 12 you still have to walk under one of the names of the tribes of Israel which helps us to understand that God is the same yesterday today and forever and therefore what he said before if you're not really able to keep it in line with <coughs> Uh, God so loved the world all we have to do is remember that all of his judgments are true in the earth yeah. and one of the things that we were talking about a few days ago was the people in heaven saying that all your ways are just and true yeah. and ultimately without understanding human nature and understanding the goal that God has for people knowing full well that we cannot be him all we have to do is believe in him right and I think actually what James says is that basically what we think and do we will see in our works yeah and uh, but it's not works righteousness no, it's, it's works from righteousness right. and so let me let me just I, this is there's anti-semitism has been a part of history dating way back when uh, it when we read the connection between exodus through ezekiel to revelation and we see here in this in this city the gates that that have their roots back in jewish history when we look at that we ought to be able to see the schemes of the evil one. People who are anti-Semitic 
are falling into the deception of the evil one and and it, it ought to it ought to build our faith to say oh god you know you you still have jewish people here you are using them you're going to use them they're going to be a part of this new heavenly city uh and we ought to I don't know if I can say that well. We ought to see that as saying, okay, that is a testament, opposition. It's a negative testament, but it's a testimony to what God is up to. So we have this city. Let's talk more about it. So he had the measuring rod, and he measured, this is verse 15, he measured the city. <clears throat> and if you read, I guess, from verse 15 through verse 21, basically you have dimensions that replicate the temple or the tabernacle is that not correct that i have if if your author is saying robert that, mounts I, says that's it well, surprise surprise it <laughs> is uh, i had actually i never really thought about that i thought about i really thought that the only thing that was representative of the tabernacle was the ark because it's two and a half to one yeah uh I don't, uh, I have not seen this as two and a half to one, but uh, really, I, when, I, when I envision this, it's like 1,500 miles east and 1,500 miles west and 1,500 miles north, Right. and it's a cube, and I was like, right. is this the Borg? Father and I Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> But uh, let, 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 and let, fifteen let, is important because it's the full moon. But yeah. Go ahead. Let's let's accept Robert Mount saying this is the dimensions of the tabernacle, and I, I just want to I, I underscored this in my notes uh, that the twelve gates are twelve pearls, Hallelujah. and Jesus told the parable the pearl of great price. He said there was a man who was a fine merchant dealer, and he'd accumulated a wealth. But in his travels, he found a pearl of great price. And he sold everything he had in order to own that one pearl. And, you know, that just, that symbolism gets me. Let me let's, let's read a little further. Uh, verse 22, I saw no temple in the city. For the temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine, for the glory of the Lord is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. <laughs> and the nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. The gates will never be shut, and so on. Uh, I, I want to stop and give you time to talk about the light, because you and I were talking earlier while you were making coffee about light. You got a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the clock, Rudy. Well, uh, it, when I when I I remember when I was reading this verse, these verses over and over and over again years ago, and even today, and I saw no temple in the city, and its temple is the Lord God, right? Uh, the Almighty and the Lamb, and the city has no need of sun or moon. And I was I thought to myself, Father, I thought that you said that the lights in heaven were good. And it seems to me that nothing that is good has ever decreated, so to speak. Right. Uh, and really my answer in prayer was the sun and the moon are there, but I'm so bright, you can't see them as well anymore. Absolutely. And so when I, when I remember reading this and it's like, is this what you're talking about, Father, that, that you are the light of the world and, and God, uh, there's no need for sun or moon or shine on it, for the glory of God gives its light and its lamp is mm -hmm. the lamp. Right. And the illustration that I got in my mind was of a light bulb. Yeah. But Jesus is the element in the light bulb. There you go. Nice. Uh, because its lamp is the lamb. Right. And by, and by its light where the nations walk, and basically there's not going to be any night anymore. Right. But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable. There's no chance that the people that are in the second death will ever be able to come into this place and de degrade it again in the way that creation had been wrecked 
by by evil. You got it. Pray for us, would you? Father, uh, we thank you for this look behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. Help us to live as if it's today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Father, help us to help us be curious to learn more about you mm -hmm. that we might talk about you as we walk through this world. Uh, help our words bring more people to your kingdom in mm -hmm. Jesus name. Amen. Rudy, thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow. More Revelation chapter 22 tomorrow. God bless you. Have a great day. Was that 10? No, that was 9. We're getting ready to do 10.